everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series where Arthur X is going to play Renowned Explorers International Society. A huge mouthful of a name, but uh, quite a good game. I, uh, it's made by a developer called Abbey Games, who uh, also made another indie game that I rarely very much enjoyed called Reus. Um, this game is quite a bit different from Reus, uh, and is actually... Uh, much more similar to another game, uh, indie game, that I quite enjoy, FTL. Um, totally different theme, but the mechanics are pretty similar, um, and especially for the actual kind of main core part of the gameplay. Um, but there's some significant differences, a different theme, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a bit of fun. I'm, um, I played through one set of expeditions, one full game basically, just kind of introduced myself to the mechanics before I recorded this series, uh, and this is going to be my second ever game, and um, I had a blast the first game, and I'm looking forward to showing you, showing all you guys what this game is all about. So, we're going to go ahead and hit a uh, new game here. So, first off, you got to decide um, what kind of mode you're on. This discovery mode is more like, I don't know, makes this game more like an RPG, I guess. You're, um, you can save, load, exit. Um, adventure mode makes this game a little bit more like a roguelike. Um, there's no saving and reloading. It's kind of like Iron Man. But the thing to remember about this game is, like FTL, it's kind of designed to be finished in one sitting. Um, my first game playthrough that I made took me a couple of hours. Um, obviously, you, if you play in Adventure Mode, you can still save and exit and then pick up where you left off, but you can't go back to and um, re-roll what happened or uh, change any of your choices. So um, this makes it a little bit more like a roguelike, but... Um, anyway, so we're going to go with adventure mode and then we have to put our crew together. So your crew consists of three members, um, which are chosen over here. You've got four categories and three slots. So that obviously tells you right from the get go that, um, you're not going to be able to have everything in your crew. Uh, and then even within these different uh categories there's kind of subcategories different kinds of skills so um for example if i go and look at this guy um he's a rogue he's got um uh he's like a he's like a mischief making rogue but not all of the uh scouts are necessarily going to be rogues um i can take a look at let's see this one for example she's a quick thinker scout as opposed to a rogue scout um this one i think there's this one's a survivalist scout instead of a rogue scout so there's a bunch of different um kind of specialties for each um uh for even even in each one of these categories so uh you're not going to be able to have everything uh there's no way so anyway the first thing you got to pick is your captain so your captain at the start at the start when you first get the game you're restricted to um, one from each category that you could choose as your captain. As I said, this is my second playthrough, so during that playthrough, uh, so your first ones are these four. During my playthrough, I also unlocked these two um, since they were my uh, they were my side party. This guy was my in my first playthrough, this guy was the captain that I chose, and then I chose these two as my other expedition members. And because I completed some expeditions with both of them, now uh, I could, if I want to, I could choose them as a captain. Um, now, being a captain, what it does is it gives you this extra captain's perk over here. Um, so, for example, Anna Proskuryakova, Proskuryakova, um, is a brilliant scientist. Completing your research paper will give your study token a random improvement. Um, so I'm not going to try and explain what that means right this second, but um, basically, when she um, <clears throat> when she upgrades stuff using her research, um, she will she gets this anyway. 
she gets a perk that improves her uh, kind of tech tree abilities. Um, this guy, this is a little bit more um, straightforward. He gets double the gold from treasure hunts. Um, I, in my last game, in my last playthrough, I found exactly one treasure hunt, so this was not all that useful. This guy gets plus fifty percent gold from encounter for the glory. Um, that would be that would have been much more uh, useful in my last game because you get a lot of encounters. Um, Queen Explorer plus one campaign whenever you resolve an encounter devious. So um, up here at the top, you can see these are the three kind of the three different ways that you can uh, damage people. Um, everybody has uh, attacks. Everybody has an attack. That one attack at least that fall each that falls into one of these three categories, and depending on which ones you do, um, and how kind of how the fight goes at the end of the fight, assuming that you win, and if you lose, then that's the end of the game. So you're going to win a lot more than you lose generally. Anyway, assuming that you win, you will win in one of these three ways based on whatever you do most or whatever you do at the end of the fight, kind of depending on how it goes. So. Um, when she solves an encounter with Devious, in other words, um, so the three different things you can do, you can be friendly, which is like you're persuading your opponents that they really shouldn't be fighting you in the first place. Uh, you could be Devious, which is you are insulting or um, terrifying or um, tricking your opponents to, um, uh, this is kind of more like intimidate. Um, intimidate or yeah so this would be like you know you're trying to convince them diplomacy this is like intimidate and this is you're straight up just beating them down so whenever she solves a, an uh, encounter by intimidating her opponents into surrendering then um, she gets extra campaign which is one of the rewards that you can get um, in this game anyway so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick let's see definitely going to do some different people. I didn't have a fighter last time, and I do kind of like this captain's perk. Um, so let's uh, let's choose Victor. Let's take a look at what we've got over here. He's a balanced fighter with high armor and no real weaknesses. So if I can look at his, um, his details over here. He's a tactician fighter. Um, and so each one of these perks um, has different levels. Um, so it, it's like a category. Each one has six different um, things you can know about being a tactician. So being a tactician, for example, two of the things you know uh, you can know about being a tactician are defense and military history. There's four more. The more we unlock, the higher level tactician we will be, um, which can be useful for different things. Anyway, that's a skill his, or a perk. His stats over here, um, this is what he does in combat. So this is his speech attack. This is his... Um, physical attack power. Uh, this is his armor, which is used to defend against physical attacks. And this is his speech defense, which is used to defend um, against uh, other opponents, friendly and uh, devious attacks. Um, you can see he starts with a leather vest and exploring for dummies. This is his equipment. He's got three equipment slots. Every character starts with three equipment slots, and then you can unlock a fourth slot. Um, and this is his level up tree basically um here you can see i get to choose between these two abilities and this is an extra ability he gets to unlock um, when he reaches that level so these are his abilities that he can use in combat um he has a just a straight up attack you can see its range is melee he's got a uh, devious attack you can see his hit chance with his devious attack is only 80%, whereas this one is 100%. So he's not quite as good at that. Also, his power is only 75% of speech instead of 100% of attack. So um, this is not as effective an attack as this one. However, situationally, it can still be better. Um, you can also see that these, uh, these emotional attacks l leave lasting modifiers. So um, if we pull this attack off, then there's a chance that our opponent becomes enraged, reducing its armor, which opens it up to more physical attacks later. Um, here we have Encourage. You can see its power is 110% of speech. Um, target becomes confident if it's positive. So that's something that we would want to do on an ally. 
Uh, and it, this one says, can heal an ally spirit by 30% times speech. All right, and then this one, um, I don't think you actually get that until like the very end. Anyway, um, and so this one, like every time he levels up, we'll get to pick one of those. We'll take a closer look at that whenever we level up. So we can see he's, um, he's pretty straightforward. What are his uh, special abilities here? Peace Treaty. Target becomes excited if it's positive, giving 20%. Expect enemies within the target store. So this is an area effect friendly attack. Adds free friendly to the, to the mood. Wow. It has a four turn cooldown. Adds a buff that gives uh, the affected minus 20% attack. So we might, we can try and use this to convince a whole bunch of people that they shouldn't fight us. Um, its power is only 50% times speech though, so it's not going to do that much damage. Um, but it does do an area of effect damage, so this would be really good against a bunch of weak enemies. Alright, so we're going to try out Victor. Um, all right, so who else should, so he's gonna, so now I'm gonna click on this slot and I'm gonna think about who else do I want? I think I definitely want a scientist. Um, so I took her last time, she's my potential captain. Maybe I'll pick one of these three. Um, so what did it say about Victor here? It said, he can turn it quick, he can quickly turn an aggressive fight friendly. He's a supportive addition to any aggressive or friendly crew. Recommended go friendly or aggressive. Okay, so I'm going to be looking for other crew members that have good friendly or aggressive abilities. So let's see. This guy says he's fully. Is this was this one of the recommended guys for him? It was. All right. Well, let's take a look at what he does. Uh, a balanced scientist with great attack and speech defense, but lacking in armor. He can lower a target's defenses, does well in aggressive and friendly crews. All right, so let's take a look at him. He's a rogue, which we can see is usually a scout talent, but not always. This guy's kind of a little bit of a hybrid. He's a rogue and an engineer. Um, engineer perks piloting, interesting. Uh, so he's a scientist. What are his abilities? He's got attack. He's got a Saturn, which is, again, you can see 75%, hit chance 80%, not particularly effective. He's got an Encourage, um, which is pretty, it's a pretty potent Encourage attack, especially since he's got pretty decent speak power. Um, he's got Revive Crew Member. Let's see, his... His two best attacks are both melee attacks, though. Let's take a look at, um, I didn't look at that for Victor. Melee, melee, his two best attacks. So I'd kind of like to get somebody that has a range. Uh, what about Agatha here? Uh, a ret rhetoric, rhetorious, 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 maybe? Scientist with great speech and speech defense, but lacking attack. Um, does best in devious and friendly crews, but might need somebody to do the physical work. Okay. Well, what was his, uh, what was his special ability? Uh, I didn't look at it. It's, um, oh, amnesia shot. Yeah, I saw this one once before. Not a huge fan. Okay. Let's take another look at her. So, so she's an archaeologist. She's just a straight up scientist. Um, architecture and history. Uh, so she's got attack. She is terrified. You can see this is a much more potent, um, devious attack. It is, however, melee. Um, she also has impress. This is a ranged, um, target is impressed. I do kind of like, Im I like to have somebody who is impressed, like weaken if I'm, uh, if I get into a friendly fight. She's also got lecture power, uh, 50. So this is another AOE attack. Um, I'm just giving it minus 25% speech. It's a cone. And all right, so she's got a cone devious attack. She also has inspiring course. Affects enemies within the target cone. Power 50% chance target becomes confident if it's positive. Interesting. All right, so she's got two AoE attacks. Um 
He's got pretty decent defenses. Okay, and what about Earl over here? Earl's a glass cannon scientist with amazing attack and good speech, but very poor defenses. Earl's area attacks are among the best in the renowned explorers. Earl does well in devious and aggressive teams, as long as there's somebody to protect him. Um, okay. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at him. Uh... So let's see. He's uh, let's see. He's got aggressive. So he's a he's got a ranged aggressive attack. His attack stat is actually pretty good. He's got no armor. He's got really good physical attack power. Um, his friendly attack is terrible. Um, so he's got an AOE. Let's see, AoE aggressive, 50% of attack. All right, and this is AoE devious, <laughs> terrify attack. Interesting. Um, all right, so he's like super aggressive. Hmm. Um, what was his skill again? He's engineer two. All right. Um, <laughs> So this gives us, if we take these two, we have an AoE effect on both, um, on all three options, which might be kind of useful, although, um, very poor defenses. What we really need now is like, uh, if we could get somebody who has a really good healing ability. But the two of the people that I took last time have really good healing abilities. All right, let's take a look and see if we can find... Um, all right, so let's go with Earl. Um, and then we'll click our third crew member here. And we'll see if we can find somebody... A brawler. A glass cannon. Uh... Devious crews. Okay. Um, least, but lacking attack and armor. Does well on most crews, but does best in a friendly crew. Someone with good armor. Recommended. Okay. So. No. A defensive speaker can force enemies to attack him with a group insult. Interesting. So if we do him, he'd give us a little bit of survivalist since we don't have a scout. Um, group insults. Target becomes enraged. Charles would surely pull aggro of the affected units for one turn. So this is like a taunt. Uh, let's see, he's got an attack. Are these all melee? Um, hmm. It's friendly. Is that ranged? Um, <laughs> is he all ranged? All of his abilities are ranged. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, he's a possibility. Um, and what's his party time? What I really like is an AoE heal. Piercing shot, eyes on the prize. Oh, focus. Okay. Um, and uh, like the one that she had last time. Um, 
Oh, I'm looking at the wrong, using the wrong thing here. Um, <laughs> seduce. 25% speech and improved impressed against opponents. Attracted to. Okay. Uh, so she has cheer. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see. He has. Well, it doesn't look like anyone has any kind of AoE heal. <laughs> so. I'm pretty strong. Let's see. We're pretty strong on friendly and aggressive at the moment, I believe. <laughs> well, he's not very good friendly. Um... All right. Well, let's just uh, let's just pick somebody here, so we can get this going. Um, I'm really looking forward to kind of trying out all of these different all of these different people. All right. Well, let's try out him. <laughs> um, I do kind of like the looks of this group insult. Uh, he's got pretty balanced stats. He's he's got a little bit of scouting ability. All right, so let's try him. So this is going to be our crew. We've got Victor, Earl, and Charles. We're going to go ahead and hit start adventure here, uh, and this will load us up. This is it. You just got your Renowned Explorers International Society membership. Victor wants to make a big entrance and goes for an elusive treasure, a Viking ship. Rumors are that the boat belonging to the famous explorer Leif Erikson is somewhere on this forgotten island. All right, time for adventure. So everyone's a little bit nervous. The first expedition is crucial for the crew's confidence. The crew starts out with low resolve. If your crew ever reaches zero resolve, the crew loses its will to explore and your adventures are over. However, every expedition you complete will give you more resolve. Okay, so now that we've got our crew, you can see we've got our captain and our two crewmen here. Uh, this is the kind of the exploration map. This is part of the game that's most similar to FTL. So uh, it's point to point movement, uh, and the number on the dotted line indicates how many supplies it's going to take us to move to that square. We can see we have seven supplies. If we run out of supplies, uh, it's bad. I actually don't know what happens uh, because uh, I never ran out of supplies on my last mission, but I assume it's it's very bad. This is kind of like your fuel in FTL. Um, you can see the points have uh, tell you a little bit about what you can expect when you go there before you go there. So this one says um, there's gold to be found here. So now there may be there may be things there that we don't know about, or the gold might just be lying around wait, waiting for us to pick up. Um, you can see, kind of like an FTL, most of the, unlike an FTL where the stars are kind of visible but the routes are not, in this case the whole thing is unexplored until we move in there. Um, but our target is visible. This is, um, when we reach this point, that will be the end of this map and this expedition. And just like an FTL, you want to explore as much as you can because this is the way you're, you're going to get more resources for later in the game. Um, so let's just go ahead and start going. So um, I'm going to travel here, pick up this gold. 
Sometimes you're just lucky. Earl was getting pretty bored as Victor was planning the next step and started picking up pebbles to skim the lake. By chance, Earl's fifth pebble was actually an old Viking coin. A small sack of coins was lying nearby. So this gave us two collect tokens. So here you can see up here is our actual resources. Down here are our tokens. We won't actually know how much this stuff is worth until after this um, expedition is over. And at that point, all of our tokens will get converted into resources up here. So um, we want to collect as many tokens as we have. We can also get abilities and um, perks and so forth that improve our rate our uh, rate at which we convert tokens into resources so there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of improve yourself here so we could go down here this will allow us to pick up some more supplies um, which is why I didn't go here first because we would have been at six we, we would have cost us one supply to get there but if we got more than one supply it would have been wasted but now that we're at six to seven I'm gonna go ahead and go here uh, normally you wouldn't be so excited about this but you found an abandoned farm the fields are all growing with vegetables and even some fruit trees. So you see we got three supplies here where we can only fit two. Um, but basically this allowed us to go to these two spots for free. All right, so down here we have an encounter. So you, you pretty much want to do every encounter that you possibly can because uh, encounters give you the most lucrative rewards for the most part. Now, um, so, so far... Unless you're about to run out of supplies, I haven't seen a situation where you want to pass up an encounter. So we're going to go down here and we're going to try this out. Two villagers keep following you and annoying you with well-intentioned questions. Wow, you come from all over the world? Wow, you've been to London? Wow, you like Brussels sprouts? Wow. Those friendly gentlemen need to be convinced to stop following you. All right, so you get a, a little preview down there. It starts a rank one star encounter. The encounters are rated one star to five stars. It's a rough guide of how difficult they are. Now here, so we here we have, um, here are three different ways we can resolve the encounter. And you can see, uh, here's bonuses that we get. These bonuses, some of them might come from perks and abilities that we have, and some of them are gonna be unique to that encounter. So in this encounter, I get an extra encounter token. I'll get two encounter tokens just for defeating the encounter regardless, but I get an extra one if I do this in a friendly manner. Um, and you can see encounter tokens give you a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, we definitely are gonna wanna try and get that third encounter token if we possibly can. So here we have our, uh, so here's our kind of tactical battle map. So in FTL, you, uh, you have your ship to ship combat. This is kind of, uh, in this game you have a, uh, a little tactical uh, battle arena, a little Heroes of Might and Magic style tactical battle arena. Here we've got our three uh, ex expedition members and here we have our opponents. Um, so, now we want to be um, friendly. We can see that they're friendly. This is going to uh, kind of affect the, what kind of attacks they're going to do on us. If we're friendly or devious, they're likely to use morale attacks rather than physical attacks. If we start doing physical attacks, they're more likely to do physical attacks as well. Kind of, kind of, kind of how the fight's going. Um, right now, uh, there's no. So we have uh, our attitude. When you take the two attitudes together, then you get the mood of the fight. Different moods give both sides different bonuses. Or maybe it's just you that gets different bonuses. Um, anyway, so we are going to... Now we can click on these guys and we can get some information about them. So their resistances and uh, vulnerabilities will be up here. You can see that they have minus 25 speech defense. So they are very vulnerable to... Um, speech attacks as opposed to physical attacks. The spirit, that's their hit points. Um, our people also have hit points. Um, one I interesting thing about this game is you always go first. So in early encounters, that tends to give you a big advantage. So unfortunately, friendly is our overall kind of our weakest, except for this guy, except for our leader. Overall is kind of our weakest um, attribute what we're going to do though is we're going to try and impress them first because when we impress him he gives him an additional minus 25 speech defense so we're going to send him back and he's going to try and impress this guy he's got an 80 percent chance to hit so he set off some fireworks this guy is impressed that lowers his spirit resistance um so then we can go over here and so he has a melee range 
uh, friendly speech attack. See, now that we've done a friendly attack, now we're pleasant. Both sides are friendly. Everything's nice. But physical attacks have a 50% attack power. So it's like we're having a pleasant conversation with our opponents. But the first person to pull out a sword and attack is going to get a huge bonus to their attack. But we want to keep this friendly so we can get the extra encounter token. So we'll have him do his friendly attack on that. It's going to be encourage. Um, and when... It doesn't really matter what attack we use to get him to zero will, to give him zero spirit. When his spirit gets to zero, he's going to leave the fight, regardless of what we did use to do that. Um, all right, so then we're going to have him try to impress this guy. <laughs> so he successfully impressed that guy and did some damage to him. All right, so then we'll end the turn. So you can see he's impressed. That's what this little pink star said. Now he's going to come up... <laughs> And he's going to try and do some, probably some friendly things to us. So he did a, uh, I think that was an excited attack on us. Reduced his will a little bit. Oh, pleased. Uh, they're positive, but no effect takes place. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and you can take a step back and try to impress this guy. Oops, just clicked. You can take a step back and try to impress this guy. <laughs> and fail. Well, you only had a 75% chance of success. Um, well, we know he's going to... He's going to succeed. So let's have him try and impress this guy. If he succeeds, it should be enough to... Yeah, so that's going to knock him out of the fight. And then we're going to move this guy up here. And we'll see if this encourage attack is enough to knock him out of the fight. Not quite. So he's encouraged, which is kind of bad. We kind of basically buffed him. He's got 25% attack power. So we, I was hoping that would finish him off. But didn't quite do it. So now, if he actually does a physical attack against us, he would do extra damage. But he missed. So now we'll go ahead and have him try to impress you. <laughs> and that takes care of all three of them. So we got the friendly victory. That means we got the extra encounter token. So we got three total. And um, since we defeated encounter with friendly for the rest of con for the rest of this expedition, uh, he's going to have plus five plus defense and plus two speech power. What a merry bunch! I'm sure they appreciate my bravery. Um, <laughs> In a kind but firm manner, you explain to them that you have to leave now. Once Victor gives them some foreign candy, they thank you wholeheartedly and go away. The crew proceeds with the expedition. All right, so our reward for doing that was we also got two campaign tokens. So campaign tokens are going to give us status. Um, so there's a lot of different resources in that game. In the beginning, it's kind of hard to keep track of what they all do. But basically... Um, uh, Encounter tokens give you gold, status, and renown, so everything but research. Uh, campaign tokens give you status and a little bit of renown. And uh, collect tokens give you gold and a little bit of renown. And then study tokens, which is the fourth kind, give you research. Renown is what you use to win the game. Uh, it's kind of like victory points, basically. Uh, status allows you to upgrade your shops and recruit followers who give you bonuses. Uh, and gold lets you buy things. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going. So I'm going to move here, and you might be thinking, well, why would you move there? There's nothing there. Because I'm looking for the hidden horde, and it is indeed here. So on every expedition, there's a hidden horde. On these occasions, fate files upon your screw. So we can choose to get a discovery, a secret, or a lot of gold. So this is like an upgraded resource token. Um, and because... We're early on. I'm going to choose a discovery. So a discovery is going to give us a lot of research when we get back to um, civilization, which is good. Uh, you'll kind of see what we get to use that with. All right, we got five food left, so I'm going to kind of head over in this direction. We'll pick up the status. 
The crew comes across a local Icelandic alderman. When chit-chatting about the weather, Victor mentions a search for a Viking longboat. The aldermen are ecstatic. A Viking ship on our beautiful island? Iceland is so full of surprises. We'll make sure to spread the word. All right, so that gave us two campaigns. We part ways, but not before Victor managed to, to insult Iceland. The harsh weather, the small towns. How can someone live somewhere where the sun only shines three hours a day? No, Victor knows that France is superior. It takes some apologizing from Charles to ease the tension. That's pretty funny. Um, okay, so now... Here and here we have our first two encounter locations, so um, or challenge locations. So challenges are not like encounters. Encounters you go into the tactical map. Challenges um, is based on your perks, your class, and um, it basically you're going to roll a die and see if you succeed or fail. So um, we have so this this one tells you that the challenge is either going to be tactics, a beguiler, or a quick thinker. So we have one of those. We have a tactics. Um, Victor is a tactics person. I th yeah, we don't have either of the other ones. Um, this one says we need a diplomat or an archaeologist. Well, we have a diplomat. He's only a level one diplomat. We still might try it. When you fail challenges, oftentimes there's some penalty, but not always. So let's try this one first. The crew is walking through a seemingly boring landscape. Suddenly, Earl finds a small piece of iron. It looks like a broken Viking sword. The crew starts investigating the area to see if there's more. This is an ancient Viking battlefield. Victor imagines the wondrous treasure that may be found here, not to speak of the fame awaiting you for such a prestigious victory. He ponders what to do next. Um, so we can do this because uh, he's a tactician. He analyzes the history of the battle. Victor takes a good moment to analyze the field and the equipment lying around and then comes to a conclusion. So we can look for... Um, so this is going to give us a shot to get a treasure, presumably. Um, so let's do... Let's look for swords. Who goes on looking around like true explorers? After 40 minutes or so of investigation, Victor finds something. All right, so this is getting him as a treasure. Treasures are what you're really looking for. So we came to this island to find a treasure, and there's one, there's always a treasure at the last spot in the location, but this is going to give us a chance to find a bonus treasure, which is always cool when you get it. So I'm going to open the treasure source, and we found the Uffbert Sword. Uh, so it's worth 100 renown and 2 insight. So we'll talk about insight a little bit more. That's another resource that you get from specifically from treasures. Um, and a so it's, it's 100 victory point and two insight. Uh, and then we for the rest of the game, gain an extra encounter token if you would call an encounter with aggressive. So for the rest of the game, we're going to get an extra encounter token if we resolve the counter with aggressive. That's really good. Um, that is gives us a big incentive to go aggressive. A fantastic find. You're going to be the envy of the renowned explorers with such a rarity. With the battlefield stripped of its secrets, the crew can continue. What an amazing day to be a renowned explorer. And we got a secret. Wow, that was a really beneficial encounter. Um, so that's going to give us a whole bunch of status and a little bit of research when we get back to town. All right, so we got three supplies left. Um, star, there's something odd here. So we could go one, two, three, or one, two, oh, we can't do that. So let's go this way and see what this something odd is. There's a trader here. You enter a shop that has supplies for some work. However, this guy happens to be one, seems to be one shady shopkeeper. All right, uh, so we can't do this because we don't have enough resolve. We can try and negotiate for better terms. I think we have a negotiate. Someone needs to go negotiate for better terms. Uh, this guy seems to be a tough match, and the diplomatic struggle will give somebody the diplomatic negotiations perk. Oh, wow. So, um, somebody's going to get diplomat negotiations as a result of this, uh, as a result of this encounter, which is pretty cool. It's a permanent perk. So, we definitely want to give it to um, our other diplomat. So, we'll give it to Charles. Now we can get supplies at the normal price. Um, do we want supplies? It would take our resolve down, but it would allow us to pretty much explore the rest of this island. Uh, I'm going to do it. We're early in the game. I think we can afford the resolve. So now we're going to leave the shop. So if we go here, now we can see that he's that extra perk gave him 
um, diplomat. Now he's a rank two diplomat uh, because he has two of the potential things we can get there. Yeah, so we're down, but we're now we're down to one resolve. So if we lose, uh, if one of our guys gets knocked out in combat, uh, it's going to end this uh, this adventure. But we can do a lot more exploring than we can do before. Uh, so let's go ahead and go here. Save exploring was not that exciting, but you did manage to find some rare edible mushrooms. A great party gift. All right, we got plus one campaign. Okay, here we've got an encounter. Kind of two rude men. Hee <laughs> hee, look at these wimps. I bet we could wipe them out easily. They're not worth fighting. These devious gentlemen are not leaving you alone. So we got to be a little bit careful not to let any of our people get knocked out or we will lose the game. So here um, you can see aggressive. This one comes from our uh, artifact that we got. Or we could go devious um, from the encounter. But we definitely want to choose to do one or two of those, either devious or aggressive. So these are the same guys. They have minus 25 speech defense. Um, but instead of being friendly this time, so let's see. That's a melee attack. Rage. That's a range two tiles attack. So let's go here with you. And we will have you enrage this guy. <laughs> so now we can finish him off with a melee or, um, yeah, basically any other attack we do, we'll finish him off. So let's take a look at our defenses. He's actually got better defenses than he does. Um, slightly. So let's go ahead. We'll have him move back and we'll attack him. So now we're tense. Both of us. Um, so who will land the first blow? So friendly abilities are 25% more power. Um, now, in order to shift the mood again, we're going to have to. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, do three aggressive or three friendly abilities. Well, we're going to do an aggressive ability down here. We're going to stab the guy with the sword which starts to fill up this aggressive meter. You can see it actually filled it up twice. Um, I'm, I think that might be because he was already terrified. Uh, now we have this guy, and he... Yeah, so we want to... Or he was already enraged. So um, we want to give one of these guys minus 25% attack. So let's go ahead... Oh. And we already moved, and I moved. All right, so we can't give him minus 25 attack. So the only thing he can do is this thing that has range two tiles. So he might as well do it. <laughs> so I got a misclick. So that's going to fill up our friendly bar one, and then we'll end the turn. So right now, if this combat was to end, we would get the devious reward. Um, if we do one more aggressive encounter on my turn, then... We will shift it to aggressive. Um, unless we do a devious encounter first. All right, so let's do that. So we'll do another devious. <laughs> Throws his glove down and smacked it. So he's confused. First we impressed him, and then we and then we uh, and then we terrified him. So now he's confused. So that removed our friendly marker here. Um, now we're gonna have. You're going to come back over here and enrage this guy. And that, we'll see, that might remove our aggressive marker. Yeah, so that removed our aggressive marker since we did one that was already up here. But now you're going to come back and just stab this guy. Now if that gives us two more aggressive, which it did, now it's going to shift the mood at the very end. Escalated. You won't take it. So... We got an aggressive victory, which gave us an extra um, encounter token from our artifact. And we also got aggressive. So now he has plus five armor and plus two attack power. Not so tough now, are you? Charles spits in their faces before leaving. All right. Um, so as a reward, we got two more collect tokens. Well, we still got four food left, so let's keep exploring. Four supplies, I should say. Who stops in an open field? Delicious rare mushrooms are going here. These will go down at great at parties or as a gift to other renowned explorers. So we got two campaign. So we got three left. Um, so we can go one, two, three, or one, two, three. Um, 
So here we have a cultural challenge and a wits challenge. Um, let's go this way. You find a local merchant who wants to trade indigenous trinket with, trinkets with you. Making deals with influential locals can increase your status and be profitable to both. However, anger the merchant and you're left with nothing. So here we have, um, this is going to be a dice roll, basically. It's, we're going to spin the wheel of fortune. And um, down here we can see our percentage chances, and we get a breakdown of what's improving this. He's getting 10% base plus 15 from his class, being a speaker, plus 40% because he's got two diplomatic perks, and plus 16.8% from speech power, which is obviously way better than these guys. So we'll have him try. He's going to spin the wheel. And he failed with an 80% chance. Uh, oh no, in an attempt to get a better deal, Charles called the merchant's wor trink wears useless trinkets. He needs to say the deal is off. Well, sometimes you have everything you want, have everything you need, but it's not good enough and you fail. All right, so let's try this one. Maybe we'll do better. Sometimes your crew finds opportunities to promote itself shamelessly in the eyes of the locals to gain status. However, uh, say something offensive or make the wrong room and no one will like you. Um, so here you can see we do not have a great shot at this one. Um, we would need a beguiler, which we do not have. So we can either, um, try, and if we succeed, we'll get three campaign, or we can pass and just take one campaign. So we got a 40% chance at three, or we can take one. Um, I'm going to take the 40% chance at three. And we failed. Charles, oops, Charles spoke ungracefully about the savages that have to be dealt with, which has offended the locals. Charles is actually talking about the sheep, but you don't know if that would have been any better. All right, well, we're down to one supply, so um, let's go to the final spot on this expedition. The Viking boat must be nearby. Once you get there, the expedition will come to an end. Oh, I also have noticed that I can level up my guys, but um, we're going to do this, and then we'll do that afterwards. Uh, so, onwards. The crew searches the hills and dales thoroughly until you spot the spot in the distance, an intact Viking boat. The crew rushes towards this amazing find. It will surely skyrocket your reputation in the renowned Explorer Society. The crew is stopped by a familiar face, the French explorer Ravideau, the number, who is number one in the most promising explorer's rankings. He laughs. Thank you, amateur. How very lucky you are to find this fine Viking boat just after me. Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out, and I really need this treasure to affirm my number one position. Your help will not be forgotten. Well, maybe. Well, wait a second. This was going to be our treasure. Rivalio continues, Most unfortunate. Maybe you should talk to my most intelligent and diplomatic scientist, Lady Cassandra Shafiq. I'm positive that she'll handle the situation with utmost respect while I take the vessel. Hey, wait a minute. Before Victor can stop Rivalo, his crew scientist Cassandra steps forward. Hello, renowned explorers. Why in such a hurry? Let's discuss this matter at an easy civilized pace, Les. So, um, this is going to start an encounter with her. Again, we've got to be careful not to let anybody get knocked out. You can see this is a rank 2 encounter. we got to defeat the boss. So... We got three options, so now we don't, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen here. Um, but we know if we do aggressive, we'll get a, uh, we'll get an extra encounter token. So we might try and do aggressive anyway. All right, so we got a lot of mobsters, which are super weak, but um, kind of, in the end, they're kind of irrelevant since our goal is just to defeat the boss. But um, we're going to go ahead and take a few of them out just to reduce the chances that we get wrecked here. So they only have 20 spirit. So just about any of our attacks is going to um, finish them off. So let's have... Let's see. Let, let's see. You're our best defender. So let's have you move back. And you can do a physical attack on this guy. <laughs> Um, so she's friendly, brutal, you're the killer, and we are um, aggressive. So that makes us stronger, in theory. Um, and we're getting plus 20 speech defense. And then we're going to have you shoot this guy. Oh, yeah. 
Um, and I'd rather not have him get surrounded. But I may... So maybe we'll have you move, like, down to here. Let's see. You, can have, you still have three people attack him, though. Um... Hmm. So maybe I'm just going to have you hang back and we'll end the turn. And they'll move up, but they just have melee attacks, at least the goons do. So they can't actually attack us this turn. All right, so now... Um... So let's see, she's excited weakness. All right, well, we're not going to take advantage of that because we are too busy punching people. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can take out three of these guys with attacks. I'm going to start by having you attack this guy. And then you're going to come over here, shoot this guy. And then you, that clears room for you to come over here, take out this guy. Yes, sir. All right, so two of them left. One of them is the boss, however. So she did an impress attack on him, which reduced his spirit, and he tried to attack him and failed. All right. Um, so now we're just going to concentrate on the boss here. Let's try and let's see. 75% terrified. All right. So we're going to have you enrage her, reducing her armor. <laughs> Which is going to let... So you see her armor is down to minus 25. Which is going to let him, these two guys do extra damage <laughs> with their melee attacks. Oh, we're not quite going to finish her off. Yes, sir! That's too bad. We might have been better off just straight up physical attacking her three times. <laughs> She did an AoE attack, which means this guy's pretty vulnerable, but we're still okay because now he can just attack her and finish her off. All right. Cassandra thinks we're a brute, but we got an extra encounter token. Barbarian! How dare you attack during a civilized conversation? People like you are the reason the gods left us. And she leaves to follow Rivalo, who has already disappeared with the Viking ship. But while she's storming away furiously, she accidentally drops a map. You're left with a cryptic treasure map. Its crypt meaning is pretty cryptic. The treasure map is passed around. After investigating it, the crew states their interpretations of the treasure map. It points to another Viking antiquity site nearby. A treasure is buried deep underground far away from here. A landmark on the map that the locals might recognize. Um, let's try this one. A landmark on the map that the locals might recognize. Charles thinks it's nonsense not to use the knowledge of the locals and goes smoozing with them. The campaign quickly yields result. Not only is your cause much more supported, but by st stringing the stories together, you infer the location of the hidden treasure. All right, so we got uh, two campaign and the Viking drinking horn, which gives us 100 renown, two more insights, and for the rest of the game, gain an extra encounter if you resolve an encounter with a friendly. Speakers gain plus two speech. Wow, so he got plus two speech, and now we can get an extra encounter token through either friendly or aggressive. I generally kind of like to stack my uh, my bonuses, but you know you can't control what you get from the treasures. So, with this last find, your expedition still concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that if you want to be the most renowned explorer, you'll have to beat Rivalo now. It's personal. All right, so that's the end of this expedition. 
Now we're gonna head back to London. But before we do, it says we built a reputation for being aggressive through our actions in this adventure. And now we're gonna cash in all of our tokens. So we got uh, this, we got 271 gold, 285 status, 41 research, and 288 renown from all of these tokens that we collected during this adventure. So we'll hit continue. Now it shows us our ranking. Um, so this is the number of victory points we got to get by the end of the game if we want to win this game. So we're at 288 now, we got to get over 2,000. Um, Explorer Society's members are excited at the progress of this awesome autocrat. So you get a, this is your leader, this is your current title in the Explorer Society. A magnificent job, the board of the renowned Explorers International Society is impressed with your expedition skills in the Highlands. For this achievement, Chairman Pinkerton gives you an upgrade to your airship, which will allow you to carry more supplies. So, I think you always get this. Uh, but it's 50 renown and insight and an extra 3 supply capacity, bringing our supply capacity up to 10. Pinkerton tells you, we're pleased that you're aiming to become the number one explorer. However, I wonder if you can beat the already successful Rivalo. We hope that you will uncover many secrets in your endeavors. The society has many leads as to where secrets may lie in wait. Um, so, he tells us basically we can go on more expeditions to get more renown. Uh, and then this is the four things we're going to do while we're in town. This is kind of the the world map. Um, but we're going to talk about this in the next episode. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you're enjoying this playthrough so far. I will see you next time. If you do like the video, be sure you leave a like on the video. Uh, it helps promote the video series because this is the first uh, video in the series. It also helps let me know that, hey, I like this uh I like this video. I like to see you play this game. I want to see more like this, uh, which helps me figure out which games I should do next. All right. Anyway, thanks once again for watching. And until next time, have a terrific day.